Yo, 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 you already know what time it is. Welcome back to another episode of Thinker versus Speaker, where I, Marissa the Thinker, sit down with different guests and we talk about all things, anything, everything, life, love, relationships, spirituality, literally whatever we want to talk about. So if you're into that kind of thing, strap up, tune in and get ready for another episode. Now, because we talk about any and everything, you know, sometimes we might talk about some sensitive topics and subjects so you know if you easily triggered take this as a general trigger warning if we say something that you don't like or don't agree with you can leave a comment we can talk about it and work through it or you can just you know do what you got to do and then we can hopefully see you next week when we talk about something different so with all that being said let's just hop straight into it we got no stranger to the show finally after so 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 long we got <laughs> ashton m geek stone vapor gamer davy all of the things back in the building how are you i'm good what's up with y'all man <laughs> he wasn't ready for me to call out uh how long it's been but you know it's all no nah, it has it has it has like i ain't gonna lie it's been a minute bro i was just saying that shit it's been a minute since I dropped the podcast. <laughs> Special St. Paul was the last one, right? Yeah. Yo, so what was your thoughts post, post that episode coming out? I know you've been hearing a lot about it. Oh, that's, that's that episode right there. Like, man, St. Paul episode. Like, that episode to me, like, we got three generations on that episode. So it's like people not understanding. That was a deep, that was deep, that was deep. But like, St. Louis is a prison, man. Like, I be talking to people. They was like, for somebody to say St. Louis is prison, they 100% correct. But it's like, I, my friend, he white, his name Caden. He worked at a big shop, but he stayed, he, he from St. Louis. Right. And he be like, hey, I'm white and I'm finna say this. Hey, if you go to St. Louis, you can't you you mind your own fucking business. It doesn't matter what color you is, just mind your business. Don't look at nobody stupid. Don't do nothing. Just mind your business. And I'm like, bro, for you white to say that, you from the city. Yeah. And he was like, I'm for real. <laughs> Cause it was this person, it was this person uh that came in. She was from Washington, DC, and she was only out here for three days. And she was like, Oh. I'm going to the Taste of St. Louis. He said, oh, hell no. Please do not. Please do not go to the Taste of St. Louis. He said, no disrespect. He said, I'm from that city. He said, you from Seattle. You ain't been out of the state of Seattle. You only going to St. Louis. He said, you want to murder capital. He said, you knew. He said, and he said, I'm sorry. You're going to either get kidnapped, traffic, or something going to happen to you. Please do not go out there. And whoever you dating said that it's okay to go out there, he's a fool. He was like, if y'all do go, just be protected. I was just like, man. He said, stay on the main streets. I'm being honest. Damn. I'm like, dude, you can't tell that girl that. Damn. I'm, even to me, like, that'll shake you a little bit. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, not even and trying to be like, yeah, I heard it. Like, she was like, are you serious? He was like, I'm like, bruh, I'm like, I'm from the city. Look at my complexion. He's serious. Yo, and you know what's so crazy? Because it's just like, you don't think about those things. You just kind of like subconsciously know, right? It's not like somebody has ever just sat, da- sat us down and said that out loud. But you know what I'm saying? It's just like growing up, you peep a lot of game. You know what I'm saying? You peep a lot of game. You might hear about a lot of situations or have seen certain situations happen and they kind of teach you like okay don't move like this definitely move like this you know what I'm saying because you kind of have some whether it be like firsthand secondhand thirdhand knowledge of like what to do and what not to do and like it even still guides me in how I move to this day not even being in that place like I remember I was out with one of my friends and, you know, her younger cousin had came with us. Right. And we were waiting on an Uber because we were in a place of town where we needed Uber. It's like 2 a.m. And we waiting on an Uber and she's like lagging behind. And I'm trying to be behind her. I'm trying to put her in the middle because my friend has the phone. 
My friend has the phone and is trying to find an Uber. I'm trying to put her young ass in the middle with my little studly ass in the back. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> it, should, like it just is what it is. You know what I'm saying? Because it just got to be what it is. Like, yeah. and it's just like she keeps lagging back and she's just like, I'm good. I'm good. And I'm like, nah, shorty, like, I need you in front of me. Like, that's right. just, like, it's just not nah, like, cause why the fuck, like, no, like you're not going to be in a place where I can't actually see you. Cause your ass could be behind me one second and gone the next, like, stop fucking playing. Walk your ass up. I don't give a fuck if you got an attitude. Walk up. <laughs> it be like that. But people, I, I'm the same. I'm, I don't know, like going from St. Louis, like going anywhere. Like, everybody be like, man, you, you ain't got to be like that. You ain't in your city no more, man. <laughs> Fuck what you saying. Fuck yeah. what you saying, bro. It's so hard to like, relax. I'm, yeah. I'm in the fucking hood. I don't give a fuck what you saying. I'm black. Nigga, I got dreads. Even though I ain't from down here, motherfuckers going to try me. I got to be 10 told down 100%. Let motherfuckers know, hey, don't volunteer yourself for no ass whooping, bro. 100%. <laughs> Yeah. And people don't understand. They be like, bro, you chill out. Like, you got to chill. You too. And like, St. Louis made me like that. Everywhere I go, I be 10 toes down. And people be like, well, why don't you mess with like niggas, like got friends and shit? I won't hang with them. Like, I ain't finna go nowhere with them or whatever the situation may be. Oh, yeah, you can come through. You can smoke, whatever, like that. But I ain't finna go nowhere with you. I don't know what type of beef you got on your head. Who you got on your head. I ain't, I ain't got none of that. And that's real. For sure. And people be like, but I don't get it. You don't understand. Man, fuck what you saying. I don't got, I don't, I don't care, nigga. You think I'm finna trust you with my life? Hell no. Nah. Nope. Nah. <laughs> nah, that's on me. That That's my responsibility 24-7 no matter where I go. Like, it just is. It just is. You know what I'm saying? It ju- It just is. Like, it's almost like you you walk around with a disposition like, hey, don't even, I'm not finna bother you, don't bother me. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I'm not bothering you, don't bother me. Like, we can just leave each other alone. And it probably and then, off from so many opportunities because you walk around like, hey, don't fuck with me. But like, at the same time, it's just like, the only reason I walk around this way is because I've had to. True, true. And like, Everybody still tell me, like, he be like, well, you still got that St. Louis in you. Just chill. Just chill. Oh, you from the city. Like, you got to chill, bro. I said, I understand everything that you say, but you got to think of it. Somebody going to try you. Somebody going to say something to you stupid. You got to let them know, like, you got to stay. Like, the way the world is now, motherfuckers snatch you up. In 2.5 seconds, you could look at somebody, bro. You in St. Louis, it's all right. So say, for instance, we in St. Louis, and you look at me, and we made eye contact. I got the thumper, and you know that I got a thump. I'm going to keep looking the other fucking way. Because at the end of the day, if I look back at you stupid, you going to clutch and pull that bitch out for what reason. But you going to shoot me for no reason. Like, people don't understand that. That's how it is in St. Louis. Yeah. Yeah. And that's and, and honestly, like listening to that being said out loud and knowing the 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 truth in it. um, It almost like, I don't know, I guess it kind of puts things in perspective, because like for me, I've had to. Kind of like try to change that mindset, right, because like part of leaving that environment is to not have to live like that anymore like that sounds like a different level of like anxiety you know what i'm saying <laughs> like like hearing it from this way it let's be real that sounds like but, a, a, a high high level of anxiety social but anxiety I, but i stay in the opposite i stay like i ain't nowhere in the hood i stay in the opposite i stay in the suburbs yeah. I, I mean i stay close to the ambulance i mean the hospital so of course i hear ambulances but i'm I want to hear some gunshots. I want to hear that shit. Like, I know to to to, to motherfuckers, it sound crazy, but it's too quiet. Like, I like to hear that. Wow, I like I like, I like to hear it. Like, 
I like to hear this shit, but at the same time, I be worried. But it's like, it's too quiet where I'm at now. Like, it's too, it's boring. So it's like, I'm used to something happening every day. Like, motherfuckers either fighting, pulling out straps on motherfuckers. Like, where I'm at now, it's too quiet, so I'm bored. Why are you bored? Because there's Why nothing more. <laughs> nothing to do. I'm loving you don't see no action. I'm loving this shit. I'm loving peace. I mean, I, I, it's like, I'm not going to cool hold. for a certain extent. Like, it's cool for a certain extent, but I just be like, damn, bro, you don't hear no gunshots, like, at all out here. Like, even on New Year's, none of this shit, you don't hear no gunshots where I'm at. That's not a Fourth bad of July, thing. none of that. And I'd be like, not a bad thing, though. Like, you know what I'm saying? That That's one less person that died that day. Like, you know what I'm saying? Dude. Like, that's not a bad thing. But, but like, is. I'm not going to hold you. Okay, I'm not going to hold you. Part of me, when I lived in my apartment, um, towards the end, when I would hear gunshots a little more often than normal, I was unconcerned. I'm not going to hold you. I was unconcerned. Part of me was just like, this ain't no different than <laughs> this ain't no different than where I came from. Did I feel unsafe there? Absolutely not. Do I feel unsafe here? Absolutely not. Cause why? I know how to move. You know what I'm saying? And whatever's gonna happen, it's gonna happen. That shit is beyond my fucking control anyway. Bullets don't have names on them. So it is what it is, you know. But when it's quiet, where I'm at, where I'm at now, and it's quiet, I don't, I'm enjoying that. Like, you know what I'm saying? But that's because I've had to embrace a new life. You know, it was a post that I put up the other day and it's something along the lines of why should I bring you my past when you're offering me a chance at a new future? And yeah, and it's and, and it, it's reminding me like, when I'm taking this time to really like figure things out in my life and change my outlook because now I'm at the point where it's like you've done the reflection parts you've done the reflection you've done the forgiving you've done that kind of stuff but then you get get to a point where you realize okay this is a new reality and I don't have to move the same way that I moved before that's why I work so hard to let these ways of thinking go because a lot of what we feel on the inside has to do with our outlook of the world. So I have to let a lot of my outlook of the world go. So now that I'm in a new reality, you know what I'm saying? I really get faced with opportunities where I have to look at things like, am I going to look at it the way that I used to look at it? Or am I going to look at the world from the eyes of this reality that I wanted to create for myself? Because it's here in front of me. But whether or not I see it is all about whether how I interpret what it is that I see right now. Hopefully that made sense. It made a lot of sense. Like, cause I'm a I'm a I'm a I'm a nigga. I'm a black nigga with dreads, all of that. So me living in this world, it's like I don't let my pride try to get the best of me. So it's like I don't like confrontation a hundred percent. Mm-hmm. Like that's real. I don't like confrontation. I like to see shit, but I don't like to be involved in shit. But it's like I've have learned to take certain situations and move different. And just in the world, me being black, and it's just staying in St. Louis. It's like I don't trust. It don't matter where I'm at because it's the same mortality. Even when I, I, I can tell you, even when I was in well, Dallas, even when I was staying in Dallas, I was cool with a white boy. He was from Chicago, but he was, he was, he was cool as hell. Like he was cool. Like, but he was white, but he was cool. And like one time I was fucking with a little bitch out there. It wasn't like, nothing like that she is a bitch she almost lost her life but she she uh really? she, um, huh? okay i said well all right uh, <laughs> she but uh I she, like uh, not stop you on that like <laughs> she uh no nah, she uh no nah, somebody has said don't call her that but uh she my old lady That's said very aggressively i'm with her right but 
you know if like, the you situation know. if y'all understand the situation then all right so i was going to get some treat and she was like hey i need to ride you need to ride with me so i test my nigga was like hey follow me because at the point i don't know where i'm going and then we going to oak cliff mm -mm. Okay. i don't know where i'm going yeah so fair enough I tell him to follow me. If it end up being the setup, he end up shooting and shit. He talking about hop up in the car. He talking about, bruh, serious. So we driving back to the city. He talking about, hey, man, I don't fuck with that bitch. He she, she bringing you in the cliff, my nigga. No, 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 no. Don't fuck with her. Like, just just stay just stay in the area that you in, bruh. Like, right. like, just stay where you at. So it was just like, after that, I'm like, Hey, when I'm Louis, Mexicans, I'm not going to hold you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the Mexicans crazy, too. Oh, I know. As a but I felt safe. They were yeah, they going yeah, to yeah. take my hand. They going to make sure you safe. Say, if, if you they amigo, you they, they, they going to look out for you. If you they amigo. <laughs> Bruh, I've never had a plug dap me up every time. Like, thank you for your business. Like, I was, I, I was. I was like, okay, all right. Hey, but them they they be having that out there, man. All right, like, I tell That's and I tell cool. people and I tell people like I tell people all the time. They be like, where the best place that you could find bullet for the Lolo? I tell them all the time, take your ass to Texas, bro. Take your ass to Dallas. Or Houston, you gonna find it's some. Gonna sound like I'm advertising this. I'm not right now. She not advertising anything, I'm not, but I'm not, I'm not advertising this. This man is speaking on his own will. I am pouring. Water. I am. There's no advertisement. We not sponsoring nobody. But if y'all, I just refer to a life that I used to live at one point in time. Let me tell you something. I'm not gonna deny who I was. I'm not gonna deny what I did. It is what it is, and that's just something that happened. But yeah, <laughs> but yeah, like. I don't know. It, it's almost like one of those things where it's just like my past guides, my decisions, my outlook or whatever. But yeah. some I have to let go. You know what I'm saying? And some things are worth letting go. They're not worth taking with you into new places. That's really what I kind of like meant by the post. You know what I'm saying? Where it's just like, I remember it was one time um, I went with my brother <laughs> and we were out at this bar like in downtown and I didn't realize like you know what I'm saying my brother don't go out to the same type of places he like my brother likes to do different things than I do you know what I'm saying so he he deals with it but you know what I'm saying he ain't the type to sit out like at bars and stuff like that he don't do all that so we out at this bar and he's like super tense and I'm like bro like what's what's up and the reason why he's so tense is because he from St. Louis. You know what I'm saying? He from St. That's Louis. That's me. He waiting on something to pop off and he can't even relax and enjoy the situation because he's back there, you know? And this is a good situation. Like, yeah, we was in a bar full of black people. They singing a Ashanti karaoke and shit like that. Like, niggas is literally in a place having fun. And it ain't no bullshit. It ain't no fights popping off. It's just a bunch of niggas having a good time. You know what I'm saying? And you can't enjoy that moment because we so conditioned to like, I got to be ready for something to pop off. And like, granted, like where we came from, you always do have to be like that because the moment that you're you in Dallas, too, now, though. Huh? You in Dallas, you in Texas, too, though. You got to think about what you like in Texas downtown. They be cracking. Down there I'm, hip. I'm hip but at the same time but at the same time though like what level am I gonna trust myself to know trust trust your intuition in the situation you know what I'm saying like to know when it's time to go ahead and shake some and to me the only way that the only way that I could like I'm, that's that's me I'm the same way when I go out I gotta be St. Louis all day every day I gotta be a honey looking out on everything the only way that I could feel comfortable is if I'm with somebody that's used to the surroundings or whatever the situation may be. And they be like, chill out. Like, you cool. Then I get comfortable. But I got to get comfortable myself. But at first, yeah, I don't need 
examining everything. Like, looking niggas up and down. What's up, bro? I'm in the cut. What's up? Always. Yeah, but, like, also, though, at the same time, though, I have to point out, like, I go to different places at the same time, too, though. I think that's really what I meant when I was just, like, you know, I was buying from the Mexicans. One, that's just because that's who was around me. I wasn't going outside the scope, you know what I'm saying, to get it. That's to that point. And the other part is just, like, you know, I kind of stopped smoking as much as I smoke for a reason. You know what I'm saying? Because as you grow, you just don't put yourself in the same types of environments to have to worry about the same types of things. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, St. Louis is crazy, but St. Louis is crazy depending on where you go. Now, granted, I know that's changed since I left. It's a little bit of everything everywhere all at once, but you know what I'm saying? Like, sometimes, a lot of times, it just depends on where you go and what it is that you're doing and who you put yourself around. It's not the thing because you it, no matter where you go you can find some bullshit if you're looking for it but sometimes if you ain't looking for it you ain't gotta find it true hopefully that makes sense as well <laughs> you know what i'm saying if you ain't, looking, you ain't gonna find it like i'm trying to figure out i'm trying to you know what i'm saying it's like one of those things right if you're looking for a wife, but you're looking for her in all the same places, and you're trying to figure out why you ain't gonna find it, cause they comfortable. Cause you ain't changed. They, just, they not. They looking for the same shit, different person. But you <laughs> stuck in the comfort zone of, yeah. just say for instance, I don't know, because that's tough. Because. We mentioned this multiple times on multiple episodes. People too comfortable, they scared to branch off. So you may have your soulmate in the world, but your soulmate may not be where you at. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because I know I wasn't meeting mine in St. Louis. But you know what I'm saying? Like, not, and that's no shade to St. Louis. It's just I, you, got, you got a person out there in the world you got a person out there in the world. I'm not being an asshole. I'm not trying to be funny, but it's just like, you know, yeah, nah, we just happen to be in the same place at the same time. You know what I'm saying? We happen to be at the same, she ain't from here, I ain't from here, but we found each other. You know, like, it's just, it, it just happens that way and you got to go beyond your comfort zone. And even when you meet, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're ready for that. You still got to grow. You still got to change. You still got to go out your comfort zone. True. A lot that's, of the relate. Uh huh. That's the hardest thing, though. I'm still trying to get out of my comfort zone of a lot of shit. It's hard. Yeah, but you guys just take the shit one step at a time, though. Sometimes getting outside of your comfort zone is just little little pushes, like you know what I'm saying. It's just little little things. It doesn't have to be like huge leaps. Uh, I think that's what people get misconstrued sometimes like it doesn't have to be a huge thing to step outside of your comfort zone maybe it's just switching up your routine to see what's gonna happen one time and then seeing if you like it you know what i'm saying you could start small um, did i lose you <laughs> uh you ain't lose me i was thinking it was something that you said and I was thinking, like, of something that someone else said, but there wasn't a response given because there couldn't be a response. It's like a person was like, uh, what the fuck did they post? They say, I'm tired of dealing with the same shit, but I want something different, but don't know where to find it. Help me out. Right. Now, the response to that is, I don't. I can't. I don't know. I don't know how to respond to it. Like, I'm still be thinking how to respond to it. So it's saying you're looking for something different, 
but don't know where to find it. Yeah. Because it's always the same shit coming to you. Okay. Um, I think the first step with something like that is one, deciding what it is that you want, right? So saying that I want something different, okay? How can someone help you find something different if you can't articulate what that something different is? You know what I'm saying? And I think even doing that amount of self-reflection opens the door to more thought. Because once you figure out what it is that you want, you can go a step further and ask, okay, what's stopping me from getting it? And then if you decide what's stopping you from getting it, what can I change in order to get it? And then acting on that. But it began, the first step is figuring out what it is that you're even looking for in the first place. Because if somebody is asking you, well, what do you want? What is going to make you happy? I don't know. Well, I can't fucking tell you either. How, how am I supposed to help you if you don't know what it is that you want? But if you say like, oh, True. I want a relationship. True. We was talking about just like the steps to figuring out what it is that you want. You know what I'm saying? And it's just like, I think, yeah, the first step is figuring out what it is that you want. Because cause everything that I know, it took me back to working on myself. Every time I had a problem or an issue with something, it always led me back to something in myself that needed to change. And it wasn't until I started focusing on myself more than the world around me that my outside world began to change, if that makes sense. True. Like a perfect example um, of something, right? It's just like, I wanted, I, I always felt misunderstood because I couldn't have these level or these types of conversations with people right you know what I'm saying it would always feel like everybody was either looking to me for answers or looking at uh, looking for me to something it was almost like I had no it's not that I didn't have peers but it was just like I was tired of being like the the go-to person in the room and not having anybody that I could go to when I needed something like if I need advice or if I need help or if I need something, there's nobody around me that can give me that help or that support. And I got, I wanted a support system. So like, basically what ended up happening, I prayed to God about it and ended up falling out with a whole bunch of people. Like things would just happen and I fell out with a whole bunch of people and I learned how to be my own support. You know what I'm saying? I, I stopped, I stopped looking for support from people who I knew wasn't going to support me you know what I'm saying or wasn't going to do that for me and I learned how to be by myself and rock on my own and then after so long of rocking on my own that's when I started getting people around me that I could really connect with you know what I'm saying that were more like me than the people who I thought were like me around me in the first place like they were like me but they were like an old version of me, not this new version of me. And then the people that I mean now, are like the new version of me, I get to have conversations. They respect me. You know what I'm saying? We on the same type of time. You know what I'm saying? It's equal. I ain't got, I'm, I'm not having as many misunderstandings. And you know what I'm saying? But that's because I had to work on my ego, my pride. You know what I'm saying? Learning how to depend on myself and all that kind of stuff. Like I had to learn how to take care of me and stop looking for other people to take care of me, whether that be financially, emotionally, like in all of the ways that you could take care of yourself. Like I can't, no matter what situation, no matter who's around or who's not, you know how to be cool, good. You ain't looking for that for nobody. So then once you start getting into your life, you can recognize like, oh yeah, I do have support. Oh, these people around me, they always supported me. I was giving my attention to the niggas that didn't support me. That's who I was giving my energy to. Let me figure out who what's real, what's not. And then you look around and it's just like, oh, I got a support system now. But that's because I had to change because I was so desperate for a support system 
that I was willing to tolerate bullshit from people who, like me, weren't willing to change. My 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 surroundings were a reflection of me, whether you like to admit it or not. It was a reflection of me. True. True. Um, I don't know. One thing, like, I, I, at the point that I fixed my relationship with my mom, but, like, I'm trying to, there ain't no trying, like, I've been trying to build a relationship, like, with my daddy, you know, he don't even mess it back. So it's to the point that I'm just like, fuck it, like, I've been washing my hands and gave up, but it's like me living in the world now. The one thing that I don't want to do is like leave on bad terms. Like one of them guys leave on bad terms, or we ain't talking, or whatever the situation may be. And it's like I don't think he understand that, and I don't know. Like he, you know, I don't know why he don't want to talk or whatever. It's just, hey, bro, just sit and have a conversation with me. Let me know. So tell me what it is. And if you, we ain't got to talk no more. That's it. Okay. But at least be a man and talk. Like, you older than I am, bro. Like, who being an adult in this situation right now? Right. I think that's kind of like something that my dad was talking to me about yesterday, right? Um, Where I'm like, you know, my dad was saying, like, as you grow, don't be afraid to just be the bigger person sometimes, right? Because you can't control what somebody else does. And I know in my life, that's been like one of the hardest things, right? Because, you know, I, I've been in situations where it's just like, you just wish niggas would just give you the dignity of a conversation to just air it out you know what I'm saying like I ain't trying to control the outcome of the conversation I'm just trying to have a conversation so we can come to some type of understanding because I want to be able to say at least we tried at least we tried you know what I'm saying like I ain't, I don't want to walk away from this situation I don't want to leave this behind like because it's something that's worth saving if it's able to be saved but you won't even give me that, you know what I'm saying? To have that conversation. It's a it's disappointing and like disheartening. And just to be frank, it's painful, at least from my perspective. And that's not with somebody that's like a father figure, you know what I'm saying? So like I can only imagine to that degree. And it's just like I think the one thing that's standing out to me is like when you know you did everything in your power and then letting it go after that. Whereas it's just like, look, I tried, I extended my hand. I did everything that I knew how to, to make this situation work. So if it never works out, I know I did everything that I can. And then whatever's left is between you and God because you stood on what you stood on, whether it be whatever it is. You know what I'm saying? And I guess that takes me to like the original idea of the episode where it's just like, you know, pride is the thing that makes you stand on business. But sometimes when you stand in on business, is it actually worth it? Because especially as a man, and you got kids or whatever the situation may be, rather than going or not, it doesn't matter. Your kids should be that's with anybody. Your kids should be your first priority, regardless of the fact. Right. So you handle them business. Your kids not business. They responsibility. There is a huge difference. So with that being said, you're responsible for this. It's it's not nothing about no business. That business shape the weight right now because your kid need you. Whatever the situation may be, that's your responsibility. Right. A lot of people get that shit fucked up. I understand money is money, but that's like, just say, for instance, if you was a mother and we had the kids together, you call me, hey, can you stop and get some McDonald's for the kids? Or can you bring the kids home some food? Your answer should be like, I, right, 
your answer should be all right. Let me make these couple sales, then I'll go. Nah, nah, nigga, take your motherfucking ass on right now. Fuck, nah. Like, I understand you making money. You could go back to that. I ain't say that you gotta stay. I said, drop your kids off some food, bro. That's the least you could do. You got the money. If you got, if you out here trapping, you money. You got bread. Hopefully, if you trapping. Hopefully, but I understand with the business and everything like that. But your kids out here, I feel like you should be, and I feel like if and when you talking about pride and stuff like that, that's a, ooh, because as a man, shouldn't none of your ops or none of your dealers. I mean, are none of your should none of your ops or your clients know where your kids or you lay your head? So it's like I don't know when it come to trapping and pride and stuff. Like, I, if my pride, if my pride, me as a man, when it come to my pride, I wouldn't have that shit around none of my kids. None, no, no, none of that because that's you putting their life in danger as well. Yeah. Yeah, which is important, huh? Like people don't think of it; they just think of it as I'm doing this for my kids. Is you really doing it for your kids, or is you really doing it for yourself? Because honestly, you could work a nine to five. Honestly, if you were smart enough and you was really doing this for your kids, you would stop trapping and be a trapper for real, and go ahead and get that up. Uh, get that car and since you trapping and you trapping in a legal state why you still driving around how the motherfuckers come to you why you still going to buy from third party grow your own shit be your own fucking boss you can do it in a legal state like if you really out here trying to let, let your pride make you be successful don't let your pride make you be a dumbass right right see and that's and that's really like the crazy part about being able to get to a point where you can use, like where you can self-reflect enough to be like, you know how some people be like, well, I'm hard-headed, I'm stubborn, I'm whatever, I'm I'm this, like I'm a hothead, you know what I'm saying? It's just like, why you, why we always, why are we so comfortable to use those things for a negative instead of using those things for a positive? Because even I think our our negative traits are something that can be used for good. You know what I'm saying? I said it in the episode that came out with Kiera where it's just like, I'm stubborn. And in the past, my stubbornness would, would be what kept me from, you know, being able to do stuff. Like, I'm so stuck in my ways. Like, if you ask me to do something outside my comfort zone, it's an F no for me. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm stubborn. It is what it is. But like now that same stubbornness is just like, you know, I'm past the point where it's just like that stubbornness was like, okay, keeping me from getting help. It's like, okay, that because I'm stubborn, I know I'm going to keep going at whatever it is that I'm trying to get. So whether or not you tell me yes, no, whatever, I'm going to get what it is that I'm going to get because I'm stubborn. You can't tell me no. So I'm going to use that to get this positive shit. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to use that to get a business started. I'm going to use that to get this shit off the ground. I'm going to use this, you know, for that versus using it for shit that, you know what I'm saying, could be good for me. Like, be smart with the shit. I'm at the point right now where I'm stuck in the environment to where, like, I want I want to start my podcast. I want to start my podcast. I want to start this vape shop. And then I also, like, want to do YouTube more. But it's like, I need to choose one and focus, focus on one. Thanks. Because I'm trying to do all this shit at one time. And it's like, I don't know what to do. And it's like, for me, it's easier for me to do YouTube. And it'll be quicker. Like, it'll be quicker for me to start the YouTube and the podcast. But my ass trying to do this base shops. Right. I'm trying to do this vape shop shit. So it's just like, that's my main focus. And it's like, I need to put out more content on Facebook. I mean, YouTube, I also need to put out, I also, I keep saying I'm going to do this podcast for about 
half a year now. Like, yeah, I gotta stop procrastinating. And like, I know what I want to do. I know the concept, of that thing, whatever. It's just that I need to sit my ass down. I need to get. I need to just. Yeah, I know what I need to do. I just gotta stop procrastinating. Stop worrying about other shit. But that's hard. Hell yeah, it's hard. It's not easy for sure. It's not easy. Like I think it's still it's a part of the journey if you ask me. But yeah, it's just a part of the journey because I feel like you know everything works together in its own way. Like everything works together, but it's a matter of just putting that shit in order. Like it's just like God is gonna give you all of the things. Like He gonna be like, hey, you gonna do this, 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 this this and then like when you get all of the ideas it's just like damn i gotta do that damn i gotta do that then i'm look god i'm overwhelmed this is a lot that you're asking me to do right now and i don't even know where to begin so i'm gonna just sleep and hopefully (laughs) and hopefully tomorrow like i'll have the answer but like really it i had to learn how to just put my shit in order where it's just like let me start with getting this podcast and that's what I'm finna do. Like school about to start and stuff. Like I'm just finna go ahead and buy me a notebook and just focus on building this pot. Like I'm finna get a mic. I'm finna get a mic. I'm finna if I gotta start portable, I'm finna buy a, probably a Mac, not a Mac, but like an iPad or something and just do shit portable. Like do it portable still had a mic and everything. I did that I, off my phone for a year. A year. <laughs> a year. It's possible as fuck. It's crazy. I'm gonna do it. And it's I'll easy. Be, I'll be like and it's crazy because everybody be asking me, hey, can I get on your podcast? Hey, can I get on y'all podcast? I'll be like, bruh, that's not my podcast. That's my other podcast. I'm just a guest. They're like, but you've been on about six times, almost five times already. You show. I said, bruh, don't you hear it? it says thinker first speaker. Special guest. Like, uh, did you hear the word guest? I'm a guest. They'd be like, well, you said you was going to make you a podcast. I said, I am. I gotta be patient. Like they be like, well, I got a topic to bring up. People be like, they want somebody who dealing with domestic violence right now. They talking about they want to get on an episode about domestic violence. You can do them live too, you know. I've seen people do them live. Like, I, I was thinking about that. Like, hey man, I was thinking about going on Instagram and just be live, brother blunt or whatever, and then just be like, hey, somebody. Whoever want to do a topic, add me anything, and let's talk about a discussion and shit on live. Yeah. I was thinking about doing that. You could. I don't know. It's always a way. It's always a way. You know what I'm saying? It's always a way, but you gotta like. It's not gonna be perfection. Like you know what I'm saying? Like it's just not gonna be perfection. Like sometimes the perfection is in the process like you just gotta do some shit you just gotta say fuck it one day and just go for it and just not even think about it no more and just just do some shit I feel like you know that already like how many times in your life have you just said fuck it and did some shit like I'm sure it's a lot (laughs) it's just another time to say fuck it and do some shit even even uh, even you reaching out to me was you saying I don't want to argue with nobody though. Huh? <laughs> I don't want to argue with nobody. That's the thing. Why like, would you I have to argue with somebody? I'm coming with love and peace. Why would you I'm have to argue? I'm coming with love and peace and so I it takes two people to argue. So if you don't want to argue, you don't. I feel like it's gonna lead to an argument. Like if so say for instance don't. like say for instance if somebody come up in the chat. And they'd be like, oh, how you feel about domestic violence, relationships, or whatever the situation may be. My first. Response. 
gonna be, I could've got out that shit. Like, that's a hundred percent. That's gonna be my first response. It's like, y'all, like, y'all dealt with, I'm, I'm gonna be like, I understand that y'all was scared, whatever the situation may be, but y'all could've been got the fuck out that situation because it, it became to the point that y'all allowed that person to, even before it got, before it got to the point of physical, if it got to that point of physical, it got to the point that it was mental, verbal. Then it got to that uh, abusive, until it got to that physical point. So you have infinite amount of opportunity to get the freak out of it. Yeah, but you, you're looking through different eyes. You're looking through different eyes. You're looking through eyes that, that know better. You're looking through eyes that can recognize the signs for whatever reason like you know what I'm saying like I don't think it's anybody who's necessarily in that situation that just like willingly hopped into that shit anybody who if they was in that situation and they knew what the, if they knew better they'd actually stay in that shit I think some people are in those situations because they literally did not know any better they couldn't see that shit coming you know what I'm saying? It's it's not no shit where they just was just like, oh yeah, this motherfucker is a master manipulator. Give it here. Come here right now. I want it. I don't think anybody ever asks for that shit. And I think a lot of people sometimes, sometimes they don't even wake up and realize that they in that dynamic. But I think some people just wake up in that dynamic and they just like, fuck, how'd I get here? You know what I'm saying? And, like, sometimes it's people's, like, lesson, you know what I'm saying? Like, I've known people that chose to go back into situations because it seemed comfortable or more comfortable or easier, or, you know what I'm saying, whatever. And I ain't saying it's right or smart, but it happens, you know what I'm saying? And I would never call that person, like, oh, you stupid as fuck. I feel like you've been through enough. I don't need to add insult to injury in this situation. Like, you know what I'm saying? I could think it was just like you know what i'm saying i could have told you that shit was coming but shit yes. i don't have to hurt you too because i'm sure that motherfucker hurt you enough i don't have to be an asshole that says i told you so because i know somebody right now who's in a, a abusive relationship but they won't say you but they in an abusive relationship and they uh they keep saying, man, I'm trying to fucking get away from this person. But uh, they won't leave. The thing is that it's my crib, but he pay all the bills. And I'm just like, bruh. That's crazy. It's a lot to that. It's a lot to that. And okay. I'm just like, I don't know what to say. Like, And like, all I was like was, Honestly, I can't answer that question because, like you say, he pay all the bills, but you can still go stay with your brother. You got obstacles to leave. You got options to leave. You just don't want to deal with the people. Yeah, and at, and at some point, like, you have to really weigh your options and, you know, really evaluate what certain things are worth to you. You know, um, Kiara and I had the conversation about worth and sometimes worth isn't in money. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, you might have that place to live, but is that place to live really something? Um, exactly. You know what I'm saying? Like, you really can't rest easy at night in that place. So is it really worth it? You know what I'm saying? Is it really worth being able to say, oh, I live alone? I, like, you can't even say you got peace in your house. You can't even say that. You know what I'm saying? You're literally just holding on to something and you're giving that more value than yourself. You're giving that more value than your peace. And you know what I'm saying? Your, your future, to be honest. You know what I'm saying? You valuing things outside of yourself to, to, you know, more than your own internal work, your, your, your soul. And it's like you got somewhere to go, but you don't want to be bothered with the people. What? Bruh. 
at that point in time, if I know that there's something going on and I got know that I have to go somewhere, I don't get no fuck. Y'all don't have to uh, burden the fuck out of me until I can get myself together. That's a hundred percent. Like I'm not. If I'm in a situation to where I got options, I'm not about to be under a roof. I understand that somebody paying my bills, but if I'm living to the point that I can't move like I want to move or whatever the situation is, it ain't worth it. You gotta go. Like I rather I rather I rather be cooped up and deal with the other bullshit that I got to deal with than deal with that bullshit. Right. But you have a different you have a different perspective. You know. But, what I'm saying? I, but it's like I understand that, but it's like why not get the options? Let's get why still put up with it? Like why still? And it's like you know you abuse. Like it's it's like it's it's putting me in a situation to where I'm a friend, and I know that you're getting abused, but I you already have a way out, mm-hmm. but you don't use your own leeway out. So it's like, what else is there for me as their friend to tell you what to do? And you already have that help there that's given to you, but you still in the same. And it's just like- You can't do anything. And, and, and it puts you in a shitty position, but you can't do anything. And you have to understand that you can't do anything because that situation isn't gonna change for that person until they decide to change it. Because those are the same people who will walk away from that situation listening to other people and then still go back because they weren't ready to leave you can't make somebody be ready to leave they don't have the perception that you have you know what i'm saying but I think still i feel way. like but, I, but <laughs> I feel like if you have that way but why do it before it's too late like but see that, that's that. what i'm saying it, it it we i said it in the beginning where it's just like you're looking through a different set of eyes that knows better you got to put yourself you got to put yourself in the shoes of a person that has no idea that it's other ways and other options. You know what I'm saying? Think about yourself where you know what I'm saying? Have you ever been in a situation where people tell you like, "Hey, it's another way to navigate that you can move." You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you you can have a better life. You know what I'm saying? You got to move like this and then you be like, well, "I don't know, that seems hard." But then I've been you, in an abusive relationship, but I'm it's saying, like yeah, but I'm saying like in general, like just putting yourself in a situation, like you got to remember what it's like to be in those shoes. It's not that easy. I know it wasn't for me. Now, granted, I'm the same person that in one one abusive relationship, I'm like, I right, get the fuck out. You know what I'm saying? It's like I right, you can get the fuck out. I'm done with this. We ain't gotta continue this no more. But the only reason why I could do that was because I was in a five-year situation that did not look like that, where I kept giving that person chance after chance after chance after chance. And then 10, 10 years later, I'm still crying to God, like, damn, that bitch hurt me super bad. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you got, like, it's just different shoes and different perspectives. That's why it's like, yeah, we both know that it's a way out that situation. But they don't know that. It seems easy for us because we've gotten out of situations like that before. But to and you know what I'm saying, and I can look back at that same five, that five year situation ship and be like, damn, I was crying over that, nigga. You funny. But you know what I'm saying. That's later after you've healed from that shit. Like people ain't in that position. They still think they in love right now. They still think they in love. This is the best that they can get. Like, what is going to happen if I walk away? What is going to happen if I leave this? They haven't realized that they need to value themselves more yet. They don't realize that they don't deserve to be treated like that yet. So you as that friend, all you can do is just tell them that it's more. So then when they go home at night and they're not happy, they can remember that guidance and that advice that you got. I think that's why sometimes we don't want to be too, too hard on niggas. Like, yeah, like you can lead a horse to water, but they're going to drink when they're going to drink. True. And, and that's all we can do is lead them to water. Because, you know what I'm saying? Holding her head down under the water ain't going to get her to drink. 
It's just going to make her hate your ass. And she's still thirsty. I be trying to help people. And sometimes, like, I'll be like, bro, you got the help already. Why not? Like, you asking me, and then you be like, you have the help. Then you be like, I don't know. Like, I don't want to be bothered with people. Like, I don't want to be bothered with them. I, it's like, I'd rather be bothered with them. Man. Obviously, you trying to get away from where you're getting from. You low-key reaching out for help. And it's like, this is one thing that I don't like, though. It's like, y'all reach out for help. Or y'all ask for help. For real. And it's like, we give it to y'all, but y'all don't take it. Like, yeah. why are we wasting our breath? Yeah. It's not. It's like that we wasting our breath, but at the same time, it's like we gave y'all the ticket to what y'all want. We gave y'all outlook. Like y'all say, we don't be giving y'all out research or nothing like that, but we give me our outlook reaches or whatever ways to get out. And then it's like, y'all don't take it. And then we feel bad at the end if something is to happen because it's like, damn, bruh. It's a line in a song. It's a Doja Cat song. But um, it's a line in a song and it sticks out to me just because, you know, I just be paying attention to little stuff like that. And um, oh, it's you held me so down, so down I couldn't grow. And the reason why that sticks out to me is because sometimes we overplay our part as people that want to help people. You can overplay your part and overplaying your part can get painful. So you got to know when to stop overplaying your part. Because people, like I said, you got to lead them to water, but trying to make them drink and watching them suffer is painful. And it takes a toll on us, whether we want to really think about it or not. Like, it can take a toll on us. Because, like, you the one that got a witness, you know what I'm saying? This friend get hurt time and time and time again. But the thing that they know is that no matter how much they hurt themselves, you going to be there to pick up the pieces. And they never have to put put the put the pieces together themselves. Cuz it's almost like we can't put the pieces together right. Like I can hand you the pieces, like it's like you come into me crying and I pick up the pieces and I hand them back to you and you supposed to put them together. But instead of putting the pieces together, you just drop them again. You take them to the person that broke you drop and you know and you bring them back to us to keep fixing it and you never have to pick up your own pieces if that makes sense so it's just like you just keep making it easier for this person to keep making the same mistakes because you're the one that's like taking that hit because they can come crying to you and then finish crying and be like okay I feel better now versus like having to really sit in it and figure it out. I be liking that shit, though. Like, I be liking people to be, like, because it's an easy one, because it's like, damn, what type of advice, let me just hear a person's story, like, what type of advice can I give them? Or what can I give them that maybe, at least maybe they'll listen to? I understand. Ashton, this is why I do a podcast. I'm not, I'm not, I'm done being your real nigga therapist friend. I'm tired. I'm tired. I'd rather just talk to, I'd rather see, and the reason why is because it's not, it's not fun when you talk saying the same things to the same people over and over again. So I'd rather give it to the people who actually want it versus trying to give give it to the people who just want to hear me talk. You know what I'm saying? If I want to keep listening to people's problems, then I need to go get a degree in psychology and get a check for it because I'm tired of looking at my friend get hurt doing the same shit with the same people over and over and over again. 
You know what I'm saying? Because I'm not going to lie. As empathetic as I am, after a while, you get to looking at that friend like, you're stupid. And I'm calling you my friend. So what is it saying about me? Because we keep repeating cycles here and I'm tired. You ain't tired because I'm tired. You know what I'm saying? Because I will get tired of a friend calling me with the same relationship problems over and over again and me being like, it's okay, girl. You'll figure it out when you figure it out. But, you know, you don't have to do that. You could actually, like, listen to the friend, to the problems of friends who are actually trying to fix their shit. And they not coming to you with the same problems, you know? And even that person could come along eventually, but you got to like, let them figure their shit out sometimes. <laughs> Cause they will, like they can, like, sometimes you got to learn when to let niggas go and pray for them. Cause they'll come eventually if they meant to. And if they keep doing the same shit, it's cause they chose that shit. And you can't get mad at somebody for choosing what they choose. true cuz after a while them niggas choosing that shit some niggas is choosing that shit let's keep it a book some niggas is choosing this shit willingly true and That's we true. mad at them we mad at them for choosing the shit That's crazy It's somebody that I watched that say you can't blame a fly for not knowing that honey is better than shit <laughs> Mm-hmm. and you trying to convince that fly that honey is better than shit when they just used to eating shit true but a bee ain't gonna eat shit it's gonna eat honey um, what yep. flavor pen you over there smashing I don't remember anymore I've had this for a while I don't even know. I don't even know. But on that point, on that note, uh, my dog's been knocking on the door so she can go to the bathroom. Act <laughs> um, them out. Yeah, and we've been talking for like a good like two, 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 two and a half hours at this point or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So on that note, like I appreciate you coming through. It's been a while. For sure. You know what I'm saying? Trying to talk to you more in the future, but I wish you a speedy recovery. Yeah. Uh, I'll be I'll be up in part in two days afterwards. I ain't I ain't trying to be down. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I need to do some more. I'm matter of fact, I am gonna do some more YouTube. So I'm think I wanna vlog, but I don't know. Do it. I, my vlog is gonna be boring. Do it, do it. I don't know. I mean, if you say they're gonna be boring, they're gonna be boring. But you see, mine. I don't think they're gonna, gonna be lit. boring. <laughs> you just you said it. You said it. You said it's gonna be boring. Now, if you say you gotta boring, find something to please the audience. Hey man, get outside. Shit, get active. Get active. You outside now. Get active. Yeah. Uh, I'm yeah. finna be. It's it's yep. still summer, like it's still summer. It's true. Oh, oh me, I'm getting, I'm getting, I'm getting expo ready. So now I'm excited. So you know what I'm saying. I'm getting. Expo <laughs> you know what I'm saying. True. American Business Leaders Expo, November fourth, eleven and four in St. Louis, Missouri. That one, that one right there. You know what I'm saying. Y'all gonna know where to find me. You know what I'm saying. Uh, I'll be there for sure, interviewing all of the. Uh, all of the vendors and you know what I'm saying, doing my thing, doing my thing, doing my thing. Who knows what I'm gonna have with me? So yeah. <laughs> true, true, true. Pop out. Yeah. But on that note, you know what I'm saying? We can go ahead and wrap this thing up. Ashley, do you want to let them know where to find you on social media? Uh y'all go find me at Facebook at Ashton Stone Vapor Davy and at YouTube at uh Stone Vapor Gaming. Bet, bet, bet. And if you're looking for me, you can find me at Marissa Y17 on Instagram, Marissa to Think on Facebook and YouTube. And then Think of Versus Speaker is going to be at Think of Versus Speaker on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. You know what I'm saying? If you like this episode, definitely make sure to give it a thumbs up, share it with your people, put other people on. If it's a topic that you want to hear us talk about, 
feel free to hit me up. I just gave you all of my social media. If you ain't here, run it back one more time. We'll give it to you. You know what I'm saying? Um, but yeah, if you got a topic that you want to hear us talk about, you want to come on the show, you want to promote a business, anything like that, go ahead, hit me up. Let me know. We can chop it up and figure something out. Um, is there anything that I want to say right here? Yeah. And if you want to add to the conversation, definitely make sure to leave a like over here on YouTube. You know what I'm saying? And I always post on my Facebook page and I'm checking it. So if you want to add to the dialogue, you know, always feel free to write me on my wall. We can get something started and cracking. Um, I think that's everything for me. Ashton, did you have anything for the people before we get out of here? No. I bet it was good chopping it up with you. I appreciate your time. You know what I'm saying? And I'm going to hit you up soon so we can keep, you know, all right. Keep it going. All right. All right, cool. Lady up. Uh